man. 122 pounder, 10 and 5, man. What's the good girl sports TV, bro? You guys can walk in Wisconsin? Watch Good fellas sports. Good fellas sports. All right, man. I kind of. Sunday and then live. I did live on Saturday morning too. Shit, I had to make it up. I, was, I got sick at the end of last week. But, uh, uh, just to do a video, give y'all more detail of allegedly what's going on behind the scenes. Um, they pretty much saying that, uh, Derrick James threw Errol Spence out the gym. It wasn't that Errol left. It said that Derrick James threw him out the gym. You know, he told him go find a new gym partner. Now, apparently, um, like I said, after I did the original video about Errol and Derek splitting, you know, um, um, I got some more intel. So basically, allegedly, he's suing for five million dollars now, give or take. I don't know. And you think over the course they've been working together as professionals even before the pros, but as professionals since 2012, and you know, boxing is a, is a small fraternity, you know, and this is how I was explaining this to somebody behind the scenes. I'm like, you know, this is why you see guys that try to stay down the middle and really don't be trying to pick fights because if you sit around and you pick a particular fighter and you cool with both, then you just start a beef with one fighter. So boxing is a very, very small fraternity, bro. Like everybody know each other in some form and fashion. They share management. They share coaches, they share gyms, they share promotional companies, whatever it may be. You know, so they share a lot. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, allegedly, they said Derek didn't have nothing in writing. You know, so it, was, it sounded like they was off a, a handshake agreement. And if that's the case, and you ain't getting, and they say that's how most trainers got a handshake agreement with their fighters. And if you got a handshake agreement with the fighter, then, you know, how can you really sue? You know, and one of the issues is that I'm guessing, and I'm saying I'm guessing, he thought that he was getting the overall pie. So whenever Earl Spence bring home, he getting a slice out of that. And allegedly Earl Spence was paying him out, out, out his guarantee. So that, that guarantee that's on paper, that said well, Earl is expected to get one and a half million, two and a half first time porter. That's what that's what the, I think that's what the sanctioning fees get a percentage of. The sanctioning above bodies get a percentage of, and that's what Derek James was getting a percentage of. And I think Derek James is under the impression that he was getting a percentage of the overall pot, the real bag. You know, what they say them back ends. So he was under the impression that he was getting a piece of them back ends. But he was just getting a flat rate. And, you know, I don't know what brought this debate up. I don't know if he hired an accountant or his math wasn't math. And they said that he still worked a job. He still got a career. Um, you know, then again, because guess what? All that shit don't pay for benefits. You know, all that don't pay for benefits. So, you know, they said that's one of the reasons why Earl didn't show up to the the Charlo fight because him and Derek was bunk was, was they was bunking over that money. Now apparently, you know, um, apparently uh, it was told to me that oh he didn't want to get questioned about the media. That's what he was telling people. He didn't want to get questioned about the media about you know the Terrence Crawford loss and all that type of shit. But you know it came out later that you know him and Derek wasn't on good time. So he didn't show up. And he told, they said allegedly Derek told him not to come back to the gym. Now, apparently people were saying in the comment section that people in Dallas knew that, been knowing, knowing this shit forever. They've been, and obviously y'all in Dallas. They've been beefing forever. It's so funny, you could be winning and none of this shit matter, but as soon as you lose, everybody looking at their pockets a little bit different. Everybody looking for a little bit of change, looking for the change, or looking for this and looking for that. You know, when you when you win, everything is key, 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 yeah, pop bottles and all that. When you lose, it seems like that's when niggas start penny pinching. So, but apparently they said Derek was the one that told him don't come back to the gym. Now I want to know like what really sparked. I want to know what really sparked the animosity about the bread. Like what made him think about the bread? 
and it's hard it's hard to financially prove something it's hard to prove something when you don't have nothing in, in right that's the that's the crazy part when you when you don't have it in writing when you don't have when you don't have it in writing shit I don't think that's gonna stand up in court. You know, and I mean, obviously, if he got a lawyer and the lawyer said we can prove this, we can prove that. Five million dollars, that ain't no chump change. Ain't nobody trying to lose five. Ain't nobody trying to lose five. Shit, niggas ain't can't even afford to lose a dollar out here. Real talk. That's something that they gonna have to figure out. But they say Derek the one that sold his ass don't come back. Play with niggas money like that, bro. And this is why you gotta get shit in right. This is why you gotta get, you know, shit notarized. This is why you gotta have accountants, business managers, all this shit. All this shit. And then you got, you know, now you got Spence fans turning against Derek Gang. Oh, he was never that good a coach, and he ain't shit, and you know he ain't that. You know, uh, you know he couldn't teach Earl nothing. Y'all wouldn't, y'all willing to switch on anybody for this nigga, man? Even when he did wrong, y'all ready to ride for him? Y'all ain't ride for y'all kids like that. <laughs> y'all don't even ride for y'all kids like that. Y'all ready to cut a nigga neck off over this nigga, man? trainer anyway. Y'all was just talking about how great a trainer he was. Y'all was giving him little participation award trophies for y'all trainer of the year. Now Derek ain't shit. shit. Niggas cold like banana splits like Jesus said, man. It's a cold world. Not a man ain't shit. You know, admit to y'all, y'all, y'all be so biased. Y'all can't even admit with a nigga it ain't Derek fault that he was out here thugging in these streets. It ain't Derek fault that he was supposed to be training. He had a day party getting drunk. You know, he even admitted that I, I wasn't living the fighter's lifestyle. How the fuck is that Derek for? It's a grown ass man with a father. With family. So if his family can't have an intervention to get this nigga to stop doing dumb shit so he can have the best and most fruitful life, you know, come on, who can? Well, you play with niggas' money, man. You, you lucky, man. You lucky. <laughs> nigga, dick. Yeah, you lucky. You lucky. You know, you lucky, man. A lot of niggas cut your hand off over five million. Cut your head off over five million dollars, my boy. A lot of people still gonna be talking about how you know Derek wasn't shit. Derek didn't say nothing in the corner. He didn't know what round it was. Uh, why y'all deflecting? Let's talk about the, the, the problem at hand. <laughs> Let's talk about the problem at hand. You know, EJ can do a bet, man. EJ is what he is at this point. Ain't nobody gonna change this motherfucker, man. He is what he is. He is what he is. As simple as that. You know, the best thing he should have did long ago was leave the city of Dallas, move his family, go elsewhere. And then, you know, when it's corrupt, we come back and figure for the living dollars. That's what he should have did. He wanted to train and hang in Dallas. And when you win it, all them fights, they were setting them in there with guys that make them look good. You know, when you win it, yeah, all that's cool. You can get away with cutting corners. When you step up to a certain level, that gap gonna close real quick. Real, real quick. Real, real quick. So, you know, you got to remember that. You got to remember that. So, I'll be turning on anybody for Earl Smith. That shit is crazy. That shit a little bit, 
you know, that's a little bit, you know, suspect. He was in, he sounded like he was in the wrong. Now, his father's story might be something different. But dude said you own $5 million, man. But if you ain't got it in writing, that's, that's going to be damn near impossible to prove. That's gonna be impossible to prove. Real talk, that's gonna be damn near impossible to prove. So, you know, that's something that they gotta figure out. Um, but they said Derek, the one that terminated that that relationship. And I always tell y'all two things that that men, that men fall out over. Money and women. Usually one of the two is the root cause. You know, usually one of the two is the root cause. So, but uh, yeah, I just want to give y'all that update, man. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Get all the notifications, push your chance. Get notifications. We go live or drop video financially. Want to support the channel? Cash at Valley Sign CJ 313 Venmo CJ 313 Pinfile link in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me on X, Spotify, Anchor, Cash at Venmo, PayPal, Kick, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, the whole nine. Appreciate the love support.